How are you? It's been so long since I have filmed a vlog. A lot has changed in this workshop, but today isn't about a tour. Today is part three on the Kimpy Master TIG 235. And it's tucked back in my little welding corner, my little welding nook. Now you may notice the cart looks a little bit different. So this is actually the same cart that I assembled in the first video, the PM45T. I've just modified it to have the bottle on the side like the PM35T. Definitely put it in the comments or reach out to me uh, if you're curious on how I modified this cart to have the bottle on the side. But that's not what we're here for today. Today is to look at the welder settings. <coughs> The first thing I did when I hooked the machine up was I put my logo on the launching screen. Uh, this is actually a, a really beautiful red, it doesn't show up on the camera at all. So right now the water cooler is running, I'll just quickly turn that off. I'll just put that to auto uh, in case I forget when I start welding, just so you can hear me uh, while we run through these settings. So when you first start up your machine, uh, you're gonna be on this, this home screen here, and all this is doing is displaying the settings that have been pre-selected. The first screen is Weld Assist. We're just gonna quickly jump through all these and do the setup first, and then come back and look at, at what all these screens do. So we've got mem memory channels, We've got start and stop. We've got pulse because we're currently on an AC setting, uh, current mode, settings, and machine information. On the information screen, you can see here my machine has been running for 90 hours, uh, just the machine being switched on, and I've only welded 16 and a half hours since owning this machine. And at this point, I'll point out that this is not a touch screen. Uh, you use the, the two buttons down here. There's a, a knob and, and a button, and then a, a home button uh, to, to access the things within the menu. So first thing you want to do when you turn on your machine is come in to settings. And here you're going to set your current limits. Uh, this machine will go from 2 amp up to 235 amps, so this is because it's a Master TIG 235. I don't weld very thick material, so um, I keep him down nice and low. I have a cable foot pedal connected, uh, so my remote mode is remote. Uh, if you have just pulled it out of the box and don't have a foot pedal, you will be on your torch switch or off if you're running a stick setup. The remote settings are for the foot pedal, so instead of controlling the amps in the main setting, you come into this setting menu, you set the, the pedal settings. So all the way to the floor, I'm getting 155 amps, and all the way off the floor, four amps or zero, and then as soon as the pedal switches on, four amps. Our button remote is the button on the TIG torch, uh, the on-off button, the 4T button, whatever, whatever you think of it as. Not necessary when you've got a foot pedal. I didn't opt for a wireless foot pedal. I didn't want to mess around with batteries, but you can get a Bluetooth pedal. So that's all we want to worry about on common welding settings. We'll skip TIG settings and MMA settings and go down to system settings. So we have the option to do a gas test, which you can set the duration and stop and start it. This allows you to test uh, flow at the torch or if you've got any leaks or any problems like that, really good feature to have without having to put any current through the torch. Uh, water cooler, you've got the option off, auto or on. In my experience, auto doesn't turn on regularly enough and my torch will get too hot to touch. So when I weld um, all the time, I just, I, just leave the, I just leave the water cooler on all the time, um, which is quite a noisy unit, uh, which is why I've got it set to auto uh, while we chat here. The cooler flow sensor shows on the home screen, and I'll show you that after. Brightness, uh, self-explanatory, weld time data. So every time you weld, it records what happened as far as amps, pulse. Uh, I think it shows frequency as well. Uh, screensaver, um, display, etc. 
the screensaver image you upload to this panel with a USB slot that's that's on the circuit board. Um, super easy to do, and there's a link on Kempi's website if you have this machine and want to put your own image on there. Really easy just to, to Google or go to Kempi's website and, and follow the prompts there. Um, you can set the date, the time, the language, and there's an option to reset there. So that's the system settings. Uh, I never ever stick weld, so um, I can't offer any advice on any of these settings, but just reading them here, uh, welding current, hot start, arc force, MMA antifreeze, so antifreeze is a feature that they've put into this machine to freeze the current as soon as you dip the tungsten or the rod or touch, um, and then VRD mode is locked on. Um, let's have a look at what that does. So we can't do anything about the VRD. So TIG settings, that's what we're all here for. The AC balance uh, goes to negative 99. When you get your machine, it's somewhere around 60 or 80, I can't recall. Uh, I've just turned it all the way up to see what all the adjustment does. And uh, the balance limit uh, goes all the way up to 20. Again, it's not set on that straight out of the box. Uh, I just put the full range in so I could play with it. Uh, lift TIG current. Just on auto, I don't need to worry about that with a foot pedal and high frequency start. High frequency spark force. So you can see, hopefully you can see there, there's a little tiny arrow that tries to tell you where it thinks is a good setting. Uh, positive ignition current, this is preset again to auto. Um, positive ignition time, auto. Negative ignition current auto, negative ignition time, auto. Uh, slight upslope, I don't require upslope or downslope because I'm running a foot pedal. Uh, Startup level I have at plus 10%, which is the recommended. Uh, downslope cut 10%, which is the recommended. Uh, again, with a foot pedal, you sort of have complete control over that anyway. 2T downslope is turned off. Uh, non-linear downslope. Um, so this should be at zero. I don't know why that was at five. Um, current freezing. So as we just had a look at in MMA, TIG antifreeze, I believe has the same feature. And I'll put the description from Kempi's manual up on the screen. I'm going to have a play with it later on. And so I'm just going to turn that on. Uh, AC phase swap current. It's a setting that I don't use. And when I have played with it, I don't know what settings uh, are actually best for it. Uh, and again, if you know, chuck it in the comments below and, and fill us all in. And then at the top there, you've just got welding process. So whether you're in stick or TIG, um, it just changes what menus are available to you. Now we've set the machine, we've got our water cooler turned on, everything's good to go. It's time to set our parameters to start welding. Now, this machine is targeted at people new to welding, I believe. Either way, it has this funky feature called Weld Assist. And if you come in here, you can pick your material. So uh, ferrous metal, stainless steel, or aluminium. And you can select one of those. You can tell the machine how thick it is. Let's just say it's two millimeter. You can tell the machine what the joint type is. So let's just say we've got an outside corner joint. Now we can pick the orientation that we're welding that joint from. Um, so I'm going to do, let's say we're going to do outside corner joint, nice and easy. The machine is going to go through and pick a list of settings that it believes is the best for the weld that you're trying to achieve. So the machine's going to take care of the amperage. It's going to turn off pulse. The rest of it here is stuff that you would need to input. So it's telling you how much argon to run, seven liters a minute. It's telling you what electrode to use, so a 2.4 mil, two millimeter filler, and it's, it's telling you an ideal travel speed. So I'm not going to click apply because when you select these settings, it automatically drops the machine down to, to 60 hertz. My, in my very limited experience with these automated settings, um, they have not been ideal. Uh, but on one occasion, I just did a quick stainless steel repair for somebody. And uh, I just came in and used these settings and 
Uh, it was actually in the ballpark on a, on a DC setting. In my experience, AC is very personal. Uh, so maybe it's great for a beginner who has never touched it before, but, but a great feature to have all the same. Now let's disregard Weld Assist and go into our own welder settings. So here we can pick uh, DC electrode negative, electrode positive, AC, and then a proprietary, I believe a proprietary system, which is which is like a pulse. This is designed to weld aluminium and will flick between AC and DC. And I think I would do a separate video on this if anybody's interested in how this behaves. If you haven't bought this machine yet and you're curious on this feature, let me know in the comments below and I will do a video specifically about the mix setting. Um, but think of it like a weird pulse setting. So AC, that's my bread and butter. That's what we're working with today. Uh, we have the AC waveform. So we have square wave, we have optima, which is Kempi's idea of a mix between square and sine wave, and it's supposed to be faster, quieter, more reliable, all that good stuff. And, and my welding style, maybe my lifetime of using square wave machines, I... I just enjoy square wave. I think Optima feels and sounds weird. Uh, it definitely has a weird arc start. Uh, square wave's where it's at for me. AC frequency, um, this machine will go all the way up to 250 and all the way down to 30 hertz. Uh, and then AC balance. AC balance is a funny one on this machine. So like I said before, I've turned I've turned it to go to the max and to the minimum, which, which looks like it goes into a negative off the off the dial there. Uh, it has a recommended uh, uh, recommended setting at 25, which is also what the weld assist setting will put it at. Um, I can weld anywhere from say 45 right down to, to 10 and get really similar results uh, with a 2% lanthanated tungsten. Anywhere between that 25 and 35 works great for new laser cut aluminium, which is uh, 2 mil, which is what I use. Uh, so if we switch this over to mix, you'll see we lose the pulse setting because the pulse setting becomes that switch between AC and DC. So from there we go to pulse mode to manual or leave it off. Reacts exactly how you think it would. It is very limited on AC though, so you have no option to change the welding current. Uh, the pulse frequency you can definitely manipulate, so we can go right up to 20 hertz, which is in that epileptic type range, and then we can go way down to 0.2. Uh, so 0.9 is a good one for me, running a, a 2 mil aluminium and getting full penetration. Uh, we can't do anything with the amps because it's controlled by the foot pedal. We can control the pulse ratio from 10 to 70. So the, the pulse base current we can manipulate on both the percentage and amps. Um, to do that, you do have to go in and turn the remote minimum up. Um, so that will be set off of, off of this setting here. Since I run it so low, um, it doesn't give me any adjustment there for me. Um, but since this is my tacking profile, I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, then here we've got our start stop parameters, uh, so 4T, 4T log and 4T log, which I think is on off. Um, so these are these are for these are for an on off switch on the torch. Uh, 2T is for the foot pedal. Here we have welding mode, we have a spot weld, we have micro tacks, and we have continuous. Uh, even though this is a tacking profile, I still like to have control over what's going on. Can't do anything about the amperage because we've set that in the settings tab. And then we have the ignition mode, which is our high frequency start. There is the option there to put it on lift start, but why would you? Uh, here we can set the pre-flow. Here I have the hot start level turned up. So there it recommends off. Uh, this just gives me a little bit more current for the tacks when I'm first tacking. I have found that plus 40% on top of that 102% that I already had in there is perfect. And then it has a time that it allows that, that extra percentage to run for. Half a second is perfect for a tack. And then post flow. Uh, post flow will run from zero way up. 
right up to 30 seconds and then it will go to auto and Again, my experience with this machine, auto doesn't run the post flow long enough for a 2.4 mil tungsten. The best I've seen it do is five seconds. And for me to keep my tungsten in good health, I need six and a half seconds. And this machine just is everywhere between three and a half to four and a half and um, nine times out of 10, it just doesn't cut it. Much better than other machines that you put on auto and they run for one or two hours. Lastly is the memory channels. Uh, so you, you pick the program just by highlighting it and then using this button here to exit off the screen. Uh, you don't have to click on it and say OK to it. Um, simply highlight it and exit the screen. And then here we've got, um, we've got all our settings that will display as we use the machine. Uh, this button on this side you can set as your own hotkey. Um, but it only gives you no shortcut, gas test, welding process, and current mode. Gas test is the only thing that has any use, just to do a flow test at the torch periodically, or when I change something or set something up for the day. Um, I wish you could program that to be the AC balance or mess around with the frequency or something like that, but um, unfortunately that doesn't have complete user control. There's a rundown or a run through of the machine's control panel. I think a lot of the settings are self-explanatory. Um, there's a couple of settings in there that are proprietary or specific to this machine or Kempi's idea of a good time. Um, all pretty awesome stuff. I think you guys want to see some welds from this machine, so I'm going to take that AC setting that we just set up in the machine. I'm going to do a quick weld and show you guys the quality that this machine produces. I don't have any actual parts that need welding, so I'm just going to do a couple of runs on this little piece of scrap out of my bin. This is 2 mil thick 5005 aluminium sheet. This weld is with the foot pedal. It is a number 5 standard gas cup and a 2.4 mil 2% lanthanated tungsten that's the blue tip tungsten i'm going to be using a 2.4 mil filler rod uh, this is a 5356 filler so that'll be one weld on the plate for you guys to see and then i'll do another with the camera on the machine so you can see what the machine does So if we go and have a look at the information, we can see that last weld that we did was for 18 seconds. Today's date, today's time. Averaged 57 amps, averaged 15.3 volts. We used 140 hertz on a square wave and we used a 0.9 hertz pulse. So if you go back, you can see one page of previous welds. So for this test that you're seeing now, I did these last four welds. So the first weld here was with no pulse, averaging 87 amps, and we did that at 140 hertz on a square wave. Uh, this was the pulse setting. Uh, this averaged at 57 amps, uh, 140 hertz, and at 9 hertz, so 1.1 second pulse time. Uh, second weld here was the non-pulsed same exact parameters but with the workpiece heated up and again here this is the pulse weld uh, same parameters and again after the workpiece was heated up so i didn't take i didn't cool down the workpiece between all four of those welds now those pulse settings i exclusively use for outside corner joints on two mil aluminium those outside corner joints uh, look like you're not going to get that in focus, but look like that. And when they're welded, they look like this. 
Uh, so that pulse setting is really handy for consistency on my products and the Kempi machine is really consistent with its pulse setting compared to my token tools machine that I was using previously. So the reality is this machine is really good. It does a really good consistent job. It just works. It doesn't have too many settings. My token tools machine had the ability to manipulate every single setting you could imagine. And when I first got this machine, I thought that was a flaw, but now that I've used the machine for some time and when I think purely on productivity, this machine is fantastic. If you want to see me dive into any of the settings specifically, leave a comment down below, reach out to me and let me know and we'll do a video specifically on those settings for you. I hope that this has given you some thoughts, what you can expect for your money and I know that there's videos out there on the other machines. Just before I go, I really want to get more subscribers. If you have watched the video all the way to the end here, why not click that little subscribe button? It actually helps me out and motivates me to make more of these welding videos. So as always, thank you guys so much for spending this time with me. I truly appreciate it and I really can't wait to see you in the next one.